hello everyone welcome to new leader training um, let's just make sure that you can hear me so on your go to webinar control panel there is a hand symbol if you can hear me please click on the hand symbol all right we're looking pretty good here okay so next thing to do is to click on it again so it goes off Excellent, thank you. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Katie Ravitch. Um, I'm the adult learning specialist here at Badgerland. Um, this is a Brownie Junior new leader webinar. Um, I'm here with my uh, coworker, Carrie Helmer, and she's going to be supporting me. We have a lot of people on the webinar tonight. Um, so I won't be able to answer all of the questions. Know that you can ask a question at any time by typing into the question bar, but Carrie's gonna try to field those questions for me as I um, focus on the presentation. Um, okay, so let's get moving as we had a lot to cover tonight. Just a few things about GoToWebinar. I'm sharing my screen with you, which is a PowerPoint presentation. So um, there are five handouts that go with this presentation that are in the handout section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, I have been told that sometimes they're hard to find or hard to download. Um, so what I'm gonna do, and I do this every time, is I will email everybody those handouts after the presentation is over and I can easily harvest your emails. Um, so um, don't worry about it if you can't find them or you can't download them because I'll get those to you via email after the presentation's over. You don't need the handouts during the presentation. Um, audio is by telephone, so you wouldn't be able to hear me say this, but if you're not able to hear, please let us know via the uh, chat or questions bar, and we'll try to figure that out. Again, anytime you need to ask a question or if I ask you a question and want some feedback, you can contact us at any time by um, uh, typing into the questions bar. Um, you can also raise your hand, which we already tried. Um, and that worked. And uh, you can raise your hand and we do have the possibility of unmuting you so that you can speak to the whole group. So that is a possibility. Um, and then don't put us on hold. And if I do, if you do want to be unmuted and speak to the whole group, if you're muted on your side, then um, it, it won't, we won't hear you. So if we do do that. Um, and then I talked about the handouts. Okay, so we are gonna keep going. Um, training objective. So this training will help you feel comfortable, confident, and prepared to lead your Brownie or Junior meetings. And let's test that questions function. So right now what I'd like you to do is find the question section and type in your name, what community you're from, and if you're leading a Brownie or a Junior troop. So let's just go ahead and take a minute and test that. So we're all gonna type into the question section, our names, where we're from, and uh, whether you're leading brownies or juniors. Okay, we have Kayla with juniors, Marsha with juniors. Whoa, so many people. Okay, it looks like that's working just fine. So one of the nice things about, and it looks like we have a, big, a mix between brownies and juniors. Um, one of the nice things about having this webinar option is that we have um, so many, uh, we can have people from all over the council attending, so that's nice. Okay, but yep, looks like a pretty good mix between brownies and juniors. Okay, so let's motor because I gotta cover brownies and juniors. Okay, so here we go. Um, so just a few basics about Girl Scouts. Um, the mission of Girl Scouts is to build girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. We also talk about the three keys to leadership, which are discover, connect, and take action. So on the discovery front, um, Girl Scouts is a little different than something like soccer or gymnastics, where girls are only doing one activity. In Girl Scouts, girls get to sample a wide variety of activities and hopefully discover something that they're passionate about. Um, on the connect front, there are opportunities for connection in Girl Scouts uh, at every level, starting at that troop level, um, all going all the way up to the international level. Of course, that'll come when the girls are older, but there are opportunities to connect internationally with the Girl Scout community. And then take action refers to part of our curriculum called take action projects that are built in, and we'll talk more about that later. Okay, so the three processes we also talk about. Activities are girl-led, girls learn by doing, and girls work together cooperatively. Uh, the girl-led piece is very important. Um, we're gonna touch on that quite a bit throughout the presentation. So kind of your goal in the sky is that eventually you'll be turning all the functions of the meeting over to the girls. But this is a process, right? Um, but I'll point out um, during the uh, presentation, good opportunities for girl-led in a meeting. Okay. 
Okay, so I just want to quickly say something about Volunteer Toolkit because I'm going to be mentioning that a lot during the presentation. We'll cover it uh, more extensively at the end, but Volunteer Toolkit is a digital assistant that's available to you as a troop co-leader. So all troop co-leaders have access to a Volunteer Toolkit account for their troop. Um, and what you'll find on Volunteer Toolkit is all the curriculum available for that level digitally that you can download and use, and also some year planning tools. And we'll go more extensively into that when we get to Volunteer Toolkit. But I want you to know what I mean when I say Volunteer Toolkit. Okay, and with that, I'm just gonna check in with Carrie real quick to see if there's anything I need to address to the whole group. Okay, um, and we can keep motoring. Okay, so you may be thinking, oh my gosh, you know, 12, 15 girls are gonna be looking at me, what do I do? <laughs> so we have a suggested meeting structure for you, which is the arrival activity, the opening, the business section, the activity section, snack, cleanup, and closing. And I'm gonna turn on my webcam because I just wanted to show you guys something. Okay, here comes my webcam. Hopefully, it's I am not seeing myself, but hopefully, Carrie, can you see me? Okay, excellent. Okay, so I wanted to point out this publication to you. This is the new, the new, it used to be called the Leader's Guide to Success. Now it's called the New Leader's Guide to Success. This is our new edition of this publication. So this is a really helpful resource to have you can look at it online, so it's on our website, but you also may get, a, if you're getting a new troop folder, you'll get a physical copy of it as well. So there's lots of great stuff in here, including a rundown of the suggested meeting structure too. So just wanted to point that out to you. Okay, and I'm gonna take down my cam because it's distracting to me. Okay, okay, so let's go through these meeting structures. But before we do that, let's talk about caper charts. So caper charts, awesome girl-led activity, uh, or girl-led opportunity. So caper charts are simply job charts. We call them caper charts in Girl Scouts, and the individual jobs are called capers. Um, so I suggest you don't have to have a complicated caper chart. There's certainly an opportunity to make a very artistic and complicated caper chart if you would like, um, but don't have to do that, right? So this is a really simple one that I pulled off the internet, and it's made to have um, clothespins. So each, girl's, each girl would have a clothespin with her name on it, and then you could clip it to the job that that girl had at that particular meeting. So the uh, jobs I suggest that you uh, start your caper chart with are opening leader or leaders, snack helpers, cleaners, and closing leader or leaders. So those are the four that I suggest that you start with, and I'll touch on those as we go through the meeting process. Um, but the caper chart can be a work in progress. Um, go through a few meetings and see what jobs you might need to add. So for instance, we've got um, put on this caper chart here, put away tables and chairs is, is one of the jobs. So wherever these girls meet, they have to put away the tables and chairs. So they added that to the caper chart. Um, one note on if you are looking for ideas about what your caper chart should look like, et cetera, uh, gsbadgerland.org, um, uh, gsbadgerland our website. You can connect to our Pinterest pages there. So if you click on the Pinterest icon, um, our Pinterest, Pinterest account is divided by level and there are a plethora of ideas there for uh, caper charts if you're, if you're looking. Okay, so then we move on to the arrival activity. So during this, uh, there can be this kind of unstructured part of the beginning of the meeting where girls are flowing in, uh, you're trying to get your materials organized, parents wanna talk to you, all kinds of things are going on. So we suggest that you have something simple and individual for the girls to focus on um, to keep that time more um, in control. Um, so for brownies, it could be something like a coloring page or a word search could be a good arrival activity. Where can you find those? You can pull them off the web. Um, that's my suggestion. They're, they're all over the place. For juniors, you might want to step it up a little bit during the arrival activity. Uh, I know everybody likes to color. Um, adults are coloring nowadays, so coloring could be perfectly appropriate for that. Or you might want to do something like a journaling type uh, activity. So they each have a journal. You have a question that they write about during that um, arrival activity section. Or some kind of fun quiz. Girls love quizzes. Um, so the arrival activity also serves an important social function where um, girls that are maybe more hesitant and um, you know, uh, when they walk into a room, this gives them something to focus on. And then girls who are more likely to uh, pair off or form cliques, that can be st uh, stopped by an arrival activity. Okay. Next part of the meeting is the opening. So once everybody's there and ready to go, um, you're gonna start by reciting the Girl Scout promise and the Girl Scout law. 
So for the promise, we hold up the Girl Scout sign. So there's a picture of the sign right there. That is the right hand. So thumb over pinky, three middle fingers together. And the promise is, on my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. So just a quick word on the word God in the Girl Scout law. GSUSA makes no attempt to define the word God. And um, I suggest that, uh, or their suggestion is that um, people substitute the word that's appropriate for them for their particular spiritual beliefs. If you have any questions about that, send those along to Carrie, and she'll tell me if I need to address that. Okay, I do have a question. Go ahead, Carrie. Any suggestions for a more inclusive option? Oh, so for the someone asked if there are any suggestions for a more inclusive option instead of the word God. This is a great question because people, um, what this means to do is keep it individual. So it should be up to the individuals what they want to put in there as if they want to substitute something for the word God. Where you get into trouble is if you start to try to, I had one troop they wanted to put, uh, someone wanted to put in, what was the word they wanted? Nature maybe, uh, something like that, or planet, I can't remember. Um, and then, then they all try to agree on that. And then you're in the same boat that you are with the word God. <laughs> so the real, the the way the, the um, the way this is to be done is that it's up to the individual. So, um, so I won't suggest a um, a word to put in there. Okay, and then the uh, Girl Scout law. So the Girl Scout law is quite a bit longer, um, and but I do suggest that you touch on it at least once a month. Um, with my Daisy groups, I say you need to say it every time because the um, Daisy curriculum is uh, based on the Girl Scout law. With brownies and juniors, yes, you should still be touching on the Girl Scout law, um, but you don't have to do it every time. Um, so ways to teach the Girl Scout law. Some leaders have pointed out to me that there's a great uh, call and response song that they found on YouTube that was a way to kind of jazz up learning the Girl Scout law. So that's one idea. And then there are many, many craft projects out there as well having to do with the Girl Scout law. So it'd be something like a different bead for a different color bead for every line of the Girl Scout law, et cetera. So that stuff is all out there if you're interested in kind of jazzing up the Girl Scout law. Okay, and then what else do you do during the opening? Well, that kind of depends on your troop. Um, if your troop is maybe a little hesitant or it's harder for them to start talking, um, sometimes something like an icebreaker is a great thing to do during the opening section. So it could be something like a fun question, like um, what's your favorite Halloween candy? And everybody gets to say something, gets everybody talking, right? Or um, you could start with a, or you could do something, uh, another Girl Scout tradition, singing a song. So the example I have right here is the Brownie Smile song. It's a classic, um, and it has hand motions that go with it. So I always suggest to leaders, there's a lot of um, resources out there for learning Girl Scout songs. But the thing that I found most useful is YouTube, because you can hear the song, so I don't read music, and you can see any hand motions that go with the song as well. So that's something that you could try if you're looking for Girl Scout songs, is to search YouTube. Again, there are a lot of resources out there, so but that's the one that's worked for me. So um, for this opening section, you've, you're reciting the promise and the law and doing some kind of opening activity, either an icebreaker or singing a song. So the first few meetings, if you're a brand new troop, then you'll be leading the girls through that so that they get the idea. But then soon you're going to want to appoint uh, on your caper chart uh, opening leader, or you could have more than one girl be, be the opening, you could have two opening leaders. And then it's their job to lead everybody, this is a great girl-led opportunity, to lead everybody in the promise and the law, and then also their job to pick what happens during the opening. Do they want to sing a song? What song do they want to sing? Do they have another idea that they wanted to do during the opening? So that's a great girl-led opportunity. And I'm just going to pause for a minute and see if there's anything that needs my attention. Okay. And then I can keep motoring so, so much to cover. Okay, business. Okay, business section of the meeting. So the things that I suggest for the business section of the meeting um, are the first thing is to talk about any uh, rules that you might need to go over. So I always encourage uh, leaders to use the words of the promise and the law to help them. So um, if you are noticing things like maybe girls are being clickish or maybe they are leaving the meeting spot a mess, you could say something like, hey, you know, when we say our law, we promise to be a sister to every Girl Scout and that's not happening and we need to figure out why and we need to come up with some ideas about how we can make this better. So you're not 
pointing out individuals, but you are asking the girls to brainstorm ways that they can improve their behavior. The real point is that if you see negative behaviors in the troop, you don't want to let those go. You want to make sure that you address them and uh, brainstorm ideas about how to improve things. Um, and the business section is just a good, a good spot to put that in. Other things to do during the business section are making any kind of group decisions you might need to make. So um, as a Girl Scout troop, you'll need to make all kinds of group decisions from are you going on a camping trip? Um, what are you doing with your cookie money? All kinds of group decisions. So I really, um, this is a good time to do that when everybody's sitting and listening to each other. I really uh, recommend to leaders to um, experiment with decision making. Uh, so there are lots of, we always sort of, we often fall back on majority rules for decision making, but there are many ways to make decisions. So, and that's a great skill for girls to learn. So experiment with decision making in that business section. Okay, so we have big business. And that's learning all of our options for the curriculum because they are a plenty at this point. Um, so we're gonna start, we're gonna cover both brownies and juniors, but we're gonna start with brownies. And we're gonna start with this, what do brownies do diagram. And this diagram is a little bit older, but I really like it because it's very logical the way it's broken down. And it shows you all of the materials that we have in print. So everything you see on this diagram, you can purchase as a printed material. We're going to start on the uh, right hand side and I'm actually going to shirt for the Brownie Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting and I'm going to turn on my webcam again because so I got a visual for you. Okay. Okay, so this is the Brownie Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting and every level of Girl Scouts has a Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting. So what's in this book? So what's in here? is a handbook section. And in the handbook section, you're gonna find um, some information on being a brownie and brownie traditions. And what you're always gonna find in every handbook section is a, if I can get to it. Oh my gosh, they have a big handbook section in brownies. What I'm trying to get to is a uniform diagram. So that's gonna be in every girl's guide to Girl Scouting will be a uniform diagram. But what I wanna tell you is they haven't updated, the, there it is. They haven't updated these uniform diagrams in a long time that are in the girl's guide. So they, I wouldn't rely on them. The principles are the same, but there's things that are not there in this, is, in this diagram. So in the handout section, I provided you with the latest um, uniform diagram and I'll also talk about where you can find those online and then again I will send those handouts to you via email after the presentation is over so if you're having any trouble um, downloading those handouts or finding them don't worry about that okay so you'll always have a uniform diagram and then the other thing that's always in the in the um, handbook is information on what we call bridging so bridging is when we move from one from one Girl Scout level to the next level um, and the uh, inf the best, I would say, the best guide to bridging is, is in the Girls, uh, Girls Guide to Girl Scouting. And uh, it's really just, um, bridging is pretty open. There's just a few simple ideas for the girls to keep in mind, a few simple steps when they bridge from one level to the next. So if you have questions about bridging, I'd say the Girls Guide is the best place to look. Okay, so then you have your handbook section that we just covered, and then you get to the real meat of the Girl's Guide, which is where you look at, where you find the packets to complete your legacy badges. So I'm gonna put this big heavy book down and grab one of those packets out to show you. Okay, so, um, well, first I'm gonna talk about legacy badges. So what's a legacy badge? So if you look at this diagram, the badges that are, are here are the ones that have uh, packets in the Girl's Guide. And legacy badges are the badges that have been with Girl Scouts from the beginning. So if you were a Girl Scout, you may remember completing some of these badges. And they're also progressive. So for instance, uh, this one is Bugs. This is the naturalist badge for, for brownies. When they move to juniors, I think it is flowers. And then it moves on to something else when they're cadets, right? So those are the legacy badges. How do you complete them? So the packets are very uh, set up very um, very clearly. They're going to have five steps. Each step has three choices. Once you complete one of the three choices for each step, you've earned the badge. So that's how the legacy badges are set up. Okay, Carrie, do I have a question I need to? Okay. 
Oh, great question. So someone asked, can I explain the difference between a badge and a patch? Um, and there's yet other things too as well that we'll go over. So a badge is something that you would get that you that the girls quote unquote earn, right, from completing a piece of the curriculum. So if you complete this, this uh, piece of the curriculum, you earn the bugs badge. A patch generally refers to what we sometimes call fun patches, which is, and we'll talk about this a little bit later when we get to uniforms, which is usually a commemorative patch for some fun event you did at, together as a troop or the girl, a, a girl did, right? And those go on the back of the uniform. And the big difference between them is you, as the girls didn't earn the fun patch by doing a piece of the Girl Scout curriculum. I hope that makes sense, but we'll talk more about it. Okay, so, in your girl's guide, your brownie girl's guide, I'm gonna turn off, no, I'm gonna leave my camera on because we have more to talk about. Um, in the brownie girl's guide, you'll find the instructional packets for doing all of these legacy badges here and the four financial literacy badges for brownies. So two of the financial literacy badges are um, to be done during the cookie season, they fit into the cookie sale, and then the other two can be done at any time. Okay, do I have any other questions about those badge? Okay. Okay. Okay, good question. So someone asked, how do you physically get those badges, right? So I'm just going to cover this right now, even though I usually cover it later. But so each of our, um, each of our uh, service centers, so Badgerland has a wide area that we cover, and we have four service centers, one in Madison, one in Janesville, one in Platteville, and one in La Crosse. Each of those service centers has a shop associated with it. And in the shop are all of the Girl Scout items that you could ever need are available in the shop. They're also available online for order. So what you would do is go, I think the easiest thing to do is go to gsbadgerland.org. And in the right hand corner, there's a, there's a little word that says shop. If you click on that shop tab, you're gonna get the locations of all our shops, the, um, t the times that they're open and their open and their contact information. So that's a way to connect with the shop. You'll also get instructions about whether uh, how to order online as well, if you would like to do that. But I realize part of your question is who pays for the badges and patches. Generally, those are paid for out of troop funds, right? So the, um, uh, the troop, the the leaders would purchase using troop funds uh, if, if the girl, so say you decide to, we're deciding to do all the legacy badges, the leader would then purchase those badges from the shop or order them to be delivered with troop funds. And we'll talk more about how we do that as well when we get, when we get there. So hopefully I've gotten, I've answered some of that. Anything else there, Carrie? Okay. Okay, so let's go to this. So that was the girl's guide for brownies. Let's go to this middle piece, this badge activity set badges. Um, so these can sometimes be confusing to people, but the way to think about them is that they're just more opportunities for girls to earn fun badges, right, in, in high interest topics. They are, they are traditionally named after the leadership journeys, which I'm going to go over in just a minute. So this is the leadership journey Brownie Quest. And then this group of badge activity set badges is named Brownie Quest, but they are not necessarily connected. Uh, you don't have to do Brownie Quest the journey to do Brownie Quest the badge activity set badges. So I want to show you what this looks like. So the badge activity set badges are in these groups of five and they can and the paperwork for them can be purchased in these groups of five. So this, which one is this? This is the World of Girls one. And again, even though it shares a name with the journey, you do not have to um, uh, have completed the journey in order to do these. And so these packets are set up exactly the same way as the legacy badges, I'll put one out here. So here's the making friends one, and it's gonna get, have five steps and a choice within, three choices within each step. So those are set up exactly the same way. So another uh, great girl-led opportunity for brownies and for juniors when we get there is to have girls take a look at this diagram and that the um, badge activity set badges that are available, because they're usually of high interest to girls, like fun topics. Um, and decide what they might like to, to do during the year. So that's a good girl-led, um, and to make it even more girl-led, <laughs> if your girls are ready for this, um, groups of girls or one girl could lead one of those. Um, they, she could be in charge. She would need probably assistance from the leader or assistance from a group, but she could be the one in charge of leading that badge. Okay, gonna move on to leadership journeys, unless I have questions about badges. 
Okay, so leadership journey. So we're on to this next, this left-hand portion of this diagram. So um, first of all, what is a journey? So that's the first thing we need to talk about. And I'm going to have a visual to show you. So this is the third one on this list here of the original three leadership journeys. This is World of Girls. So as you can see, this is the book that girls get. This is much longer than a badge, right? So that's the first thing to know about journeys is that they are a much bigger commitment than a badge. A journey could potentially take a whole Girl Scout year to complete. Um, doesn't have to, but it can take a whole Girl Scout year to complete. Other aspects of a journey, they always are themed. So this one is World of Girls. This is in the It's Your Story, Tell It series. And the theme is generally self-expression. So it's a, um, or, uh, how to express yourself through things like writing and art, et cetera. So that's the theme of, of this journey. And also and on top of that, we'll have a theme having to do with that level. So this is girls around the world is, is the theme here. So that's another characteristic of, of journeys is that they're longer, bigger commitment. They're, a, they're themed. Um, they also always culminate in a take action project. So that's why I was talking about take action. So what is a take action project? A take action project is developmentally appropriate project for girls to make the world a better place. So as they work their way through the journey, they'll be um, progressively learning how to complete a take action project. And then uh, there's a process for coming up with that take action project at the end. So all journeys include a take action project. So how do you, um, I think those are my big three about what characterizes a journey. And then sort of an overarching characterization is badges are really focused on skill building. Um, what, you know, let's work on one skill like first aid or painting. Um, journeys are much more focused on what does it mean to be a leader and teaching leadership skills. So by that very nature, they're much sort of bigger than, than working on a badge. Okay, so how do you lead girls through uh, a journey like this? next visual aid here. So this is the girl book. You have the ability to purchase the adult book as well that goes with that. And this is like your teacher guide. So these are available for the three original leadership journeys. Um, and uh, this will have some information about the theme of the journey and working with brownies in general. And then it's going to have seven to 10 lesson plans in it um, about how to uh, lead the girls through this journey, how, how to organize the meetings for that journey. So that's a resource that's available to you to help you lead girls through a journey. So for brownies, the three journeys we have in print are Brownie Quest, Wow Wonders of Water, and World of Girls. Those are the three that are original leadership journeys. What did they earn in terms of, we do not call them badges, we call them awards. So when you complete a journey, you earn an award um, and they're progressive for these, for these brownie journeys. So you see these triangles here. As the girls work their way through the journey, they earn first this one, then that one, then that one, and then they complete it and have that last patch. So that's the award for that journey. Uh, do I have a question, Carrie? Great question. So someone asked, does each girl need a journey book or can they share? That's entirely up to your troop, the girls. Um, you know, if you want my opinion, they certainly don't each need a uh, their own book. But if a girl wants to customize, so um, there is... Uh, in the old days in Girl Scouts, you used to get your own handbook, um, and that was something that you could customize and 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 uh, write notes in, etc. So these printed materials kind of take that place now. Um, so if a girl wanted her own journey book, where she would, because uh, there are activities in here that she could fill in, you know, um, she could write her own answers to in there. So, but. Again, you don't, of course, have to do that. Um, one thing I will let the brownie leaders know is that uh, I do offer, I'm sorry, junior leaders, um, but I do offer uh, brownie, or we do offer as a council brownie book bags to borrow. Um, so it's called the book loan program. So what that would be is a uh, brown bag that has a uh, brownie girl's guide to girl scouting in it. Um, and then the three original leadership journeys, Brownie Quest, Wow Wonders of Water, World of Girls, one girl book and one adult book in each of those. How do you get them? So you would go to the closest shop and fill out a leader agree uh, book loan agreement, and then you can borrow that book bag for however long you are a Brownie leader. And I check in once a year. Okay, other questions? Um, okay, so someone asked, how long does it usually take to complete the activities required to get a badge? Um, 
That really depends on your group. Um, and when we get to volunteer toolkit, I will, um, the, so this stuff, the, these uh, badges and journeys are also all available on volunteer toolkit. And they generally uh, have two meetings to complete each legacy badge or each badge activity set badge. Um, you may find that that's a comfortable pace for you. It may, you maybe can go faster or you may want to slow down too. So it's kind of kind of up to them. But I would say they have generalized that each, um, each badge uh, for brownies and juniors would take two meetings, meetings being an hour to an hour and a half. Okay, anything else? Okay, so we're gonna move on just a little bit here. Um, so brownie journey choices and where to find them. So with the advent of volunteer toolkit, we don't have just the three original journeys. We have more journeys, which we're just gonna go over real quick. But this is just a helpful uh, guide. And when you get the handouts, either download them or get them via email from me, um, you will. this is just a good thing to have to show you where to find those things, to where to find those journeys. Um, that's why I threw this in here. But let's go over them. Okay, VTK year plans for brownies. So with, with uh, VTK, we have a lot more choices than what is just what we have in print. So again, VTK is Volunteer Toolkit, and the way it works is that you select, they organize things into what they call year plans. And so each year plan is meant to last a Girl Scout year, right, so a school year. Um, and they include certain things in the year plans. And I wanna just go over quickly with you what is available on Volunteer Toolkit for Brownies. So what they've got is a Brownie Badge Year, which includes the badges pictured here. So that's Brownie Badge Year 1. Um, Brownie Badge Year, oh, and then one thing I wanna say about this um, is the uh, Take Action Project that's included in the Brownie Badge Year 1. This is a little confusing. So I just told you that a um, journey is characterized by having a Take Action Project. This Brownie Badge Year 1 includes a Take Action Project, but it is not a journey. Um, this would come into play when, uh, if you were interested in earning what's called the Summit Award. So the Summit Award, girls can earn when they complete three journeys at the at the level that they're at, right? So they, if, for brownies, you have two years at the brownie level. If you complete three brownie journeys during that time, girls can earn what's called the Summit Award. And it can be any of the journeys, the three original ones or any of the ones that are available on Volunteer Toolkit. But it cannot be this Brownie Badge Year One, even though it includes a Take Action Project. That's I just wanted to alert you to that. Um, we've got Brownie Badge Year Two that includes these badges, Brownie Badge Year Three, and then we've got two new ones, two new year plans that just came out in July. So coding in the outdoors. So there's a, uh, some material in there about uh, coding, computer coding. And then some adventure, outdoor adventure. Oh wait, no, I guess this is outdoors and then they also have outdoor adventure. And then they added a second new badge plan, a year plan with space science and outdoor adventure. So just so you know, those are out there now too. So those are all of the badge year plans that are available on Volunteer Toolkit. Then we get to the journey year plans that are available on Volunteer Toolkit. We've got those three original journeys, Brownie Quest, World of Girls, and Wow, Wonders of Water. Those are available on Volunteer Toolkit in a digital version, also available in print. But then we get to journeys that are only available on Volunteer Toolkit. You may be able to find bits and pieces of them in print, but you could never find the whole journey or the Take Action Project anywhere but on Volunteer Toolkit. So that's something to know. And that's how this, this chart starts to become um, more, sorry, this chart makes more sense when you know that. Okay, so back to this. Um, choice nine for brownies would be an outdoor journey, which includes three existing badges and a take action project. Um, then there is the three STEM journeys. Think like a citizen scientist, think like an engineer, and think like a programmer. These can sometimes throw people off, these pictures, because this award here takes, I believe, six meetings to complete. Right. So it doesn't look like they're, you know, earning many awards with that, but this one actually takes six meetings to complete. Um, so those are all your journey choices on Volunteer Toolkit. And then if that weren't enough, you have yet another choice to um, pick your own. So select your own a custom year plan. So what you would do there is you would uh, select from all of the Brownie curriculum. You can assemble your own year plan out of all of the Brownie curriculum. 
Woo, I'm going to pause before we move on to juniors um, and just check in with Carrie and see if I have any quest questions. OK, question. Okay, so someone asked, talk more about Brownie Badger 1, 2, and 3, um, and uh, those being, so what I'm understanding is that they aren't saying that as a first-year Brownie troop, you would do this Brownie Badger 1. They just are saying, here are three choices of, of bad years. Now we have five choices of bad years. So don't think of it that way. It's not saying that um, this is for Brownie Badger 1 is for first year brownies or Brownie Badger 2 is for second year brownies, right? It's just uh, options, options that you can pick. So I hope that answered your question. Write in again if it didn't answer your question. Anything else? Uh, so someone asked if you can put more than one year plan together. Um, so the way you would do that um, when you get to Volunteer Toolkit and then um, when you start fiddling around on Volunteer Toolkit, the way I would suggest that you do that would be to pick the year plan that has the most of what you need in it that, you know, and then there is an option on Volunteer Toolkit to add meetings to your year plan. So instead of, I, I don't, you can't add a whole other year plan to it, but you can add meetings from uh, the whole library of meetings to it. But I don't think they'd let you pick two year plans. You have to pick one year plan and then add things to it. Anything else? Okay. Okay, gonna keep motoring. Um, so let's talk about juniors. Um, so it's very similar, to, the layout is very similar, but we're gonna quit with one exception for juniors, which is the bronze award. So let me grab my visuals. So starting on the right-hand side is our junior girl's guide to girl scouting. And as we said with brownies, there's a girl's guide for every level. It's gonna include that handbook that has the uniform diagram in it that you're not paying attention to because it's outdated, but the bridging information, which you are paying attention to. And for juniors, it has the guide to the bronze award. And I'm gonna show that to you. So, here we go. So um, as when they're juniors, um, they are eligible to start working on the bronze award, which is the first of our higher awards. It goes bronze, silver, gold. Um, so guidelines for completing the bronze award are available in the Junior Girls Guide to Girl Scouting. I'm going to, in a minute, show you they're available in a lot of other places as well. So I'll show you that as well. But that's a difference in the Junior Girls Guide. Um, then you get into the legacy badges for juniors. So as you can see on the diagram, um, the legacy badges are here. Those are the badges that have been with us from the beginning, set up exactly the same way as the brownie ones. Um, five steps, three choices within each step. So the girl's guide for juniors includes these legacy badges and then the four financial literacy badges you see here. Two go with the cookie business, two can be done at any time. Then we get to our um, badge activity set badges. Again, named after journeys, don't have to, uh, don't have to do Agent of Change the Journey in order to do Agent of Change the Badge Activity Set badges. Um, so those come in a group of five, set up exactly the same way as the Legacy badges. Five steps, three choices within each step. Again, I'll repeat, this is a great girl-led opportunity. Have girls take a look at this diagram, pick which, which badges they may be interested in. And if they're up for it, as you proceed through the year, have them lead the badges. Okay, so then moving on to the uh, journeys. Here are the three original journeys that are in print for juniors. Again, I'll remind you what they look like. So this is Amuse for juniors. This is the girl book. So as you can see, big commitment, right? Has a take action project. I shouldn't say big commitment, a bigger commitment than a badge. Has a take action project that goes with it. You earn an award for that. Um, so, and that also has, just like the brownie ones, an adult guide that you can purchase to go with that as well. So for juniors, we have the three original journeys, which are Agent of Change, Get Moving, and Amuse. But then we have so many more choices too. So here's another one of those charts that shows you where the journeys are available. Um, and then, yeah, I've kind of put them in the wrong order, but that's fine. Um, then we'll move on to our volunteer toolkit. But let me just pause for a minute. Did we have something, Carrie? Okay, great. 
Okay, so again, Volunteer Toolkit now for juniors. So again, Volunteer Toolkit offers things in these year plan formats, right? So for, and it looks very similar to the Brownie one. So for juniors, we have Badge Year uh, 1, Badge Year 2, and Badge Year 3 um, with those mix of badges. And again, those aren't according to which year you are in juniors. They're just choices that you have. Then the two new ones, Coding and Outdoors and Space Science and Outdoor Adventure. Then we get to the journeys. So the three original journeys, Agent of Change, Amuse, and Get Moving, also available on Volunteer Toolkit as well as in print. But then these are the journeys that are only available on Volunteer Toolkit for juniors. You maybe could find bits and pieces of them in print, but you're not going to find all of the instructions and the Take Action Project anywhere but Volunteer Toolkit. And for juniors, there's an outdoor, and just like for brownies, there's Think Like a Citizen Scientist, Think Like an Engineer, and Think Like a Programmer. And I will remind you, because this sometimes throws people, the um, this award here takes six meetings to earn. It looks like oh, only one award, what? And then you have a Take Action, which usually I think they, they, they uh, divide into three meetings. Whew, okay, I'm gonna pause just for a second. Anything? Okay, great question. So someone asked, can girls uh, earn badges or, or work on journeys on their own? Yes, so all the Girl Scout curriculum can be done on, on, on their own. Um, they wouldn't want to pick something that you're working on as a troop, right, to do on their own because you're working on it as a troop. But if you're um, not working on, um, say that you're not doing the get moving journey and, and someone would really like to do it, your role as the troop leader would be to check in with the girl as she works her way through it, maybe enlisting a parent helper. So maybe, uh, you know, mom or dad can kind of be their supervisor. Um, so checking in with them, they will show you what they've done to work their way through the journey. It doesn't need to be something rigorous, you know, um, because you don't have the time to uh, guide each girl individually. So, you know, so um, so she would check in with you. She'd say, this is what I've done to earn this piece and let me share this with you. And then you would make the decision whether she earned the award or not. So that would be how you could, but that stuff is all of, that. that's true of any Girl Scout curriculum that you're not pursuing as a troop. A girl could pursue that on her own. Usually with a parent helper is how they do it. Okay. All right. Oh, and then for uh, juniors as well, you can do um, the select your own year plan. So that would be where you can pick and choose from all the junior curriculum to assemble your own year plan. Whew. Okay. Sorry, I've just been talking a lot. I'm going to turn off my webcam. Okay. Um, let's keep moving unless I have something I need to answer. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about the bronze award because that's the um, uh, the, the the thing for sorry the change for juniors. So bronze award, first of our highest awards. One thing to know is that ju uh, juniors need to complete one junior journey before they're eligible to pursue the bronze award. Um, that's the first requirement you hit in Girl Scouts, really. Uh, Daisies and brownies don't have uh, any kind of journey requirements, um, but juniors, if they would like to pursue the bronze award, then they need to, to complete one junior journey first. Uh, where do I find information about the bronze award? I think the best place to start is our bronze award page on gsbadgerland.org. Um, so the, the nesting for that is gsbadgerland.org, our program, highest award, bronze award. And if you scroll through that page, it's very well set up. It has all kinds of information on it. It has um, even tutorials on it about the bronze award. So that's the first place to start with your questions about the bronze award. And then other places you can find information. Again, the Junior Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting has the bronze award guide in it. Um, gsbadgerland.org we just talked about. There are also bronze award roundtable webinars that Alyssa Zimmerman, she's the head of Older Girl Programming, gives. And those you'll be able to find in our activity calendar if you're interested in those. Um, and then you can also contact Alyssa uh, uh, individually at her individual number or her email. So that's the my lowdown on the bronze award. I'm gonna pause and see if I have any questions on bronze award. Okay. All right, so, oh my gosh, that was a lot of choices. <laughs> what do we do, you know? So a lot of people ask me, what do I do with all of those choices? Um, and that's really up to you. Again, there are no requirements um, in Girl Scouts, except for that one that I just mentioned, um, that, that if girls would like to pursue 
the bronze award as juniors, they're going to need to complete a junior journey first. So say they are interested in the bronze award and you have two years as a as juniors, you might want to focus on a junior journey the first uh, first year of juniors and then um, have be ready to start working on the bronze award the next year. So that's something you could do. Again, it's really up to the girls' interests and what your troop would like to do. So there are no real requirements. Do you want me to tell you what to do? Some people do. So some people say, oh, I, tell me what to do. Um, I think it's a great idea to focus on, um, for brownies, to to work through those legacy badges your first year if you're looking for, um, you're asking me what should I do? Because those are really like the fundamentals of Girl Scouting and, and the girls really love them, right? So if you're saying, hey, what should I do? Go ahead and look at that. If you're saying, don't tell me what to do, go, I've given you all of your options and there's many, many things that you can pick from. Um, I'm gonna leave it there uh, and see if I have any questions. Nope. Okay, so it's really up to you and the girls' interests what you do with that one caveat. If they want to do the bronze award, then they need to do a journey. Okay. Wow, we've made it all the way. Let me check my time here. Okay, we're doing good. We've made it all the way to the activities section of the meeting. And the activities section is where you're going to work on some piece of the curriculum, um, uh, usually. Uh, so a badge, uh, if you're working on a journey, etc. I wanted to to make clear the difference between formats. So on this left-hand side, you can see these badge packets. Um, and those are nicely set up. We went, we, we looked at some of those. Those you can find in the Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting or in the um, badge activity set badges, right? So very graphically pleasing, easy setup. I on the right is what you would find in Volunteer Toolkit. So this, is the activity plan and volunteer toolkit and these are really the directions for how to lead the girls through completing a badge or an award right and as you can see that looks pretty different right it is not geared towards the girls at all it's geared towards you as the leader and it's very complete it have uh, um, directions for exactly what you should be you should do right so i just wanted to make sure people understood the difference between those two formats um, i've compared a lot of them so there are um, uh, all of the material as both that we have some material we have material that's both in print and on volunteer toolkit and they're generally the same what they ask you to do I would say the the general difference would be the activity plans on volunteer toolkit are much more specific and uh, uh, rather than choices it's much more you will play this game here is the game to play right you know rather than pick a game um, so that's kind of the difference are each of them legitimate yes they're both totally legitimate. Um, some people use both, uh, both formats. They like ideas from both formats. Um, with all Girl Scout curriculum, we encourage you to own it. So we take a look at it and say, mm, I don't know, I think I'm going to change this. We're going to do it this way. That's fine. You're totally empowered to make changes and do it the way that works best for your troop. And with that, let's look at an activity. So this is an activity that I pulled from the activity plan for the Brownie Legacy Badge, Naturalist Legacy Badge, which is about bugs. It's called the Bugs Badge. Um, so uh, this is the Volunteer Toolkit activity plan for this, for one of the steps of this badge. Take a look at it. Um, go ahead and read through it. Um, and then we're going to talk about it using this activity as an example, how to lead activities using this as an example. So go ahead and take take a few minutes to one or two minutes to read through the bug box activity. I can rest my voice for a minute. Okay, one more minute here just to, to get the gist of what they're asking for with the bug box. Okay, hopefully everybody got a chance to read through that. All right, so let's just talk about facilitating an activity using this activity as an example. And I am going to ask for some feedback from you guys for this one that you can type into the question section. 
So the first thing you need to think about in terms of activity is setting up and preparing. What do you need to do to set up and prepare for this activity? So I'm asking you, go ahead and type something into the, um, into the uh, question section. What would you need to do to set up and prepare for the bug box activity? Um, so Brianna says, make a demo box to show them what it looks like when it's completed. Okay, so have an example. Any other thoughts about what you need to do to set up for this activity? Get donations of shoe boxes. Have boxes available and ask parents to bring them. Acquire enough materials for everyone. And then <laughs> Brandy says, weeks in advance, ask kids and parents to save a shoe box. Good point, Brandy. Yes, so you're all thinking along the lines of materials, right? We need to get those materials and we need to do it beforehand, right? Because we can't just show up at the meeting and say, okay, let's get our bug boxes out because we haven't gotten those yet. So yeah, sure, thinking about um, what materials you might need beforehand. Um, also thinking about, and this comes into play with quite a bit of the Girl Scout curriculum, time of year, right? So um, this requires a specific time of year, doesn't it, to do the bug box? You couldn't go out there in the middle of January and expect to find bugs on the ground. You maybe could come up with some very creative way to do it inside, but this activity best done outside, right? So thinking about that, right? And also thinking about, you know, space. Um, where do you meet? Is there somewhere available for you to go outside and, and work on this activity? Do you need to schedule some going somewhere to a park? Something like that, right? So thinking about all those things in advance. Um, our Ariana says, could use fake bugs since the weather is getting cooler in my area. And if you're afraid of bugs too, you could use fake bugs. And I have heard of people using fake bugs for this activity, but ideally it's designed for them to explore the outdoors, right? Um, okay, so, um, so that's thinking about and setting up basically rule of thumb. If the first time you were reading through this activity was when you um, was when you were presenting it to the girls, you'd be totally out of luck, right? Because you wouldn't be ready for it, right? Okay, so then the next step is talking about any rules that you might need to set up. So a lot of times the activities will, um, uh, oh, here Brandy has a great rule. And do not poke your friend or write on the box. <laughs> um, when I read through this activity, um, and it said to poke holes in the boxes with pencils. I used to be an elementary school teacher. Immediately, I thought, oh my gosh, I need to tell them, or I need to, I don't like that. I don't like poking things with pencils, right? That doesn't sound safe to me, right? So I might think about what I'm gonna do instead, right? Or come up with any sort of rules I feel I need to instate about pencil poking. So that's the point of the rules. Sometimes they'll give you suggestions. Um, in the activities of what rules to set up, more in the volunteer toolkit activity plans they will. But you know your girls, you know your situation, right? You may need to have made, you may say to yourself when you're reading through this, I need to say, <laughs> um, you know, before they get going. So just thinking about that. And then you have got all your materials, you're all set up, um, you have established all the rules, you're ready to go. Um, and then uh, you set the girls loose on this activity, but you still have to, have to actively monitor and your volunteers that are helping you actively monitor the activity. What are you looking for? So I'm asking you again for feedback. What are you looking for when you're actively monitoring an activity like bug box? So Brianna says safety, definitely. You're looking for safety and also understanding. Do they know what they need to do? What else are you looking for when you're actively monitoring? Not too many holes, not too big. Yes, yeah, so following directions setting them up for success. Any other thoughts on what you're looking for? Kindness, learning, girls guiding each other, cooperation. So great, so those are, you're all just playing right into my hands. Um, I think of, uh, of what you're looking for on kind of two camps, right? So there's sort of the, um, no wait, I usually say that with something else. Hold on, let me gather my thoughts. Okay. Um, yes, uh, you are uh, looking for uh, safety, and that's usually easy easier for us to to um, to get our heads around, right? We, you're usually all going to come up with those things, like if you're outside, they can't run in the street, or make sure they stay in this area, or don't pick up a stinging insect. You know, like those are safety things that usually easily occur to us, and that we're we're prepared to help the girls with. But then sometimes there's those harder things that I call emotional safety. Um, so things like are they cooperating? Are girls leaving each other out? Is someone stealing something from someone else? You know, so there are those those two sort of categories to watch for and to make sure that you're guiding girls girls and, and um, that they're doing the right thing, right? Um, okay, so, and then the other thing I always want to say about monitoring activities is thinking about um, 
how the girls are responding to this activity. So you may notice, maybe not this activity, but some other activity, the girls really like this, right? They're really learning, they're really cooperating well, they're getting a lot out of this activity. So as a leader, you're gonna bookmark that in your mind and say, hey, this is a great activity for us. I really like this. I think the girls would benefit from either doing more of this. Maybe we can design another activity like it, you know? So just making sure you're noticing those things when you're monitoring the activity. Okay, so then the last point is conclusion or debriefing. Um, so that's just making sure that you're drawing some um, connections and conclusions from the activity with the girls. Some activities are pretty cut and dry, maybe a craft project where you don't need to do a lot of this type of thing, right? Um, but uh, with, um, with some other activities, so for instance, when I teach the DAISY webinar, um, we cover the activity I choose is kind of controversial. It's a very competitive game, right? And so in a competitive game, things can happen um, that are not so nice, right? You know, where someone might get upset and, um, and it's a learning experience. So you wanna make sure that you talk about those things um, when you're concluding the activity. So usually a debri debriefing is, um, a set of questions and sometimes um, that you're asking the girls and sometimes they will give you suggestions for those questions in uh, in the activity plans and volunteer toolkit but just making sure that you're drawing some connections girls are understanding why they did the activity and how it connects to the larger plan okay thank you for your feedback and I will get out of questions and move on to snack yay break time uh, unfortunately, we have no snack because it's all digital. Um, but all I want to say about snack is that you, you're not obligated to provide snack. So that's the first thing I want to say about snack. You do not have to have a snack in your Girl Scout meeting. Lots of um, uh, troops choose to have a snack, um, and and that's fine, and that comes a tradition, you know. But it's completely up to you whether you want to have a snack or not. What you have for snack is also up to you. What, when you have snack, um, and also how you provide snack. So always the most common way in troops to provide snack is a rotating job that is generally put on the caper chart. So it'll be this girl's turn this week, next week it's this girl's turn. Um, that's a way you could do it, but you can buy, it's perfectly legitimate to buy snack from troop funds and provide it that way. However you wanna do snack is up to you. And then the other thing is kind of finding where snack fits if you are having a snack finding where snack fits in your meeting. Um, sometimes if you promise a snack and you don't deliver until very far down in the meeting, kind of like I'm doing right now, even though I don't even have snack for you, <laughs> um, it, girls can be distracted by that. So sometimes you have to figure out what works best for snack. If you have any questions about snack, send those along to Carrie and I'll address them, but we won't spend too much time on it. And we'll move right on to activities. Okay, so um, with, all this great work you're doing with the girls, experience together, you're gonna to wanna to do things outside your normal meeting times, right? So go on and do experience activities. So I just want to um, introduce you to this uh, concept of progression. So this is the outdoor progression chart uh, for Girl Scouts. It's their official outdoor progression chart, but it kind of works for all activities. Um, and the general concept is that um, you know, girls take on developmentally appropriate activities, gain skills, and then use those skills to take on the next level of activity. And that's true for you too as leaders, right? So the goal being that you don't drop yourself into something that you're not prepared for because you haven't done the steps leading up to it. So on that note, I'm gonna ask for your feedback again. Um, so thinking about where you're at, if you have a brand new troop or maybe you're stepping up to an existing troop, what would be an appropriate first trip out first uh, activity outside your normal meeting time for the situation that you're in. Go ahead and type something into the question section. Um, okay, so nearby playground, short hike, picnic at the park, hiking trip, these are great suggestions. Oh, camp out, we're at our fourth year together. Okay, so Kimberly says they're, they're ready to camp out because I assume as they're, they're at their fourth year together, they've gone through a lot of um, experiences together, gone through these preliminary steps, and now they feel ready to camp out. Jennifer says, we're looking into doing a hike and planning an overnight. So it really just depends on where you're at with your group. Um, so you would not want, um, if you're brand new, you wouldn't want uh, your first trip out to be like a 10 day backpacking trip in the Rockies, right? Yeah, no, that's a terrible idea because you're not ready for that. Um, you want something that's appropriate. And if you're brand new, I really, um, 
uh, caution you, or, or caution you, that's not what I want to say, suggest to you um, that you want to keep it simple. So something like a nearby playground, I love that idea. So you can do a lot, you know, maybe it's right in walking distance within your uh, normal meeting spot. You could work on bugs. If you're working on bugs at the nearby playground, you could do all kinds of things, right? And then that gets some experience under your belt. Get back, everything went great. Um, no one died, and now maybe you're ready to move on to the next step. Maybe you're ready to go to the zoo, and that's going to require a whole next level of complication, right? You need parent chaperones, you need permission slips, et cetera. So lots of things to consider in terms of activities. Looks like everybody's on the right train of thought here. Okay, where can you find activities for your Girl Scout troop. So I'm just going to give you a few suggestions here. So one place to go is to gsbadgerland.org and go to the activities section of our website. And uh, you will find at the activities section under event program guides, the Pathfinder, which is our annual list of um, activities, uh, girls, uh, activities that Badgerland has created, right? So for your, uh, the, the Pathfinder is up digitally. So the new Pathfinder for uh, the 2020 membership year is up on the website digitally. You can look through it and you can sign up for things as well. Um, it's a very different format. So get ready. <laughs> if you have used to other form, other Pathfinders, you're gonna be like, whoa, they changed this, right? So, so go ahead and take a look at that online. I do not know when they're going to appear in your mailboxes. We do mail a paper copy to every registered member of the Pathfinder. Um, I don't know when those are going out. Do you know, Carrie? Okay, so we have not gotten an update yet on when the paper pathfinders are going out and going to appear in your mailboxes, but it is online, so you can go to the activity section of the website to take a look at that. Um, okay, so those uh, the pathfinder will clue you into all of the activities that Badgerland has planned and that you're uh, able to register for. But another way you can find activities is in this more stuff to do section, um, and here you'll find uh, the uh, our community opportunities. So there are two types of community opportunities, and they've gone by many different names throughout throughout time in Badgerland. They've been Badgerland friends. They've been program partners. Right now we're calling them community opportunities. So the first level of community opportunities are ones where Badgerland initiates. Oh, so what is a community opportunity? That is a business or an organization that has a relationship with Badgerland where they offer something from a discount all the way on a continuum, all the way up to, you know, I know the Discovery World does an overnight where they're doing a piece of the Girl Scout curriculum. So there's a huge range of these things. Um, so sometimes Badgerland initiates a community opportunity with one of these community opportunities. Um, so to find those, those are not listed in the Pathfinder anymore. They used to be. They're not anymore. To find those, you're going to have to go to this More Stuff to Do page and click on Upcoming Community Program Opportunities. When you click on that, that'll get you the list of ones that Badgerland has initiated and directions on where to go, who to contact if you're interested in participating in that. The other thing you can do is look at our community opportunity directory, which is here on, on and it's, it's an ever-changing document. That's why it's always online. But you can initiate a experience with a community opportunity for your troop as well. So take a look through that community opportunity directory, and it'll tell you what, where this thing, where this opportunity is, what they offer, how much it costs, who you should contact, et cetera. So that's another option. Okay, I'm going to check in and see if I have questions. Uh, interesting question. So someone asked, if you have a high energy child, is it acceptable to request that the, that, that child's parent chaperone the trip? Um, yes, I think it is. <laughs> um, let me think for a minute about things I know about this. Um, yeah, I would start there, you know, and say, you know, hey, uh, you know, you wouldn't probably want to say, you know, to the parent, um, hey, super high energy kid, you need to come, say something like, hey, we'd really like you to come, you know, that'd be really helpful, blah, blah, blah. If you get any pushback, you know, type of thing, then I would go to the next step. What do you think, Carrie, would be the next step? The parent is not interested in coming along. Yeah. Down and talk with them. Yeah, so we're gonna come. Necessary. We're gonna come back to this because we could probably talk a lot about this, <laughs> um, and I need to cover the rest of the material. But we'll get back to you um, about suggestions for that. 
but I think it is, yes, appropriate. If that was the original question, it is appropriate to ask the parent to accompany you. Okay, so uh, we talked about community opportunities. Okay. Okay, so we are really motoring here at 704, good. Um, okay, so we've come to the last section of the meeting, which is clean up and closing. What do I need to say about cleaning up, except that a Girl Scout leaves a place better than she found it. So um, you're gonna wanna put cleaning jobs on the caper chart and make sure that girls are participating in cleaning up. Um, and then closing. So we recommend that you close your meeting with a uh, friendship circle. So it's pictured here, um, girls are facing in, it's right over left, um, hands are joined, and then the, the closing leader gets to start the squeeze of friendship. So if that were me, I can squeeze the hand of the girl next to me and the squeeze passes all the way around the circle until it reaches my other hand, the hand that I didn't start with, and then we can turn out of the circle. So that's the basics of friendship circle. A few tips that have been passed on to me by leaders that I, I always pass on. Um, sometimes the squeeze, oh, first one, remind girls that it's a squeeze of friendship, right? It's not a bone crushing squeeze, right? So sometimes that can be a problem. Nice little gentle squeeze of friendship, right? And then it's another thing that happens is sometimes a squeeze will get lost as it's moving around the circle and people get all panicky. So a great tip is to have girls put a foot into the center of the circle when they feel the squeeze. That way you can mark where the squeeze is. Other than that, it's really up to you um, uh, how you wanna customize friendship circle or if you wanna customize friendship circle for your troop. Um, tr troops have fun making uh, friendship circle um, traditions. The most common one I've heard is singing the song, Make New Friends, Girl Scout classic in um, friendship circle, but there are all kinds of things that you could do. Uh, so another girl led opportunity on your, on your caper chart. Someone is the closing leader and make sure you put that on the caper chart because people, everyone wants to be the person starting the squeeze of friendship. So let's just make it cut and dry. Um, and then that's also that person's job to, um, what are you gonna do to customize friendship circle? or what tradition do you want to do in Friendship Circle this time? So that's another great girl-led opportunity. Okay, checking in quickly with Carrie, I think. Okay, well, we'll carry on. If you have questions about Friendship Circle, go ahead and send those in. Oh, let's talk about uniforms, yay. Okay, so um, once they get past daisies, uh, where you have the tunic option, the options are vest or sash. I don't have the sash pictured here. I've just gone with the vest. Um, uh, so, but you can picture what a sash looks like. So I've got both uniforms up here. Good rule of thumb, general rule of thumb for uniforms. And we kind of covered this uh, when someone asked the difference between badges and patches. All of your um, earned awards, so uh, badges or awards that you get from journeys go on the front of the uniform, earned being that you've completed a piece of the Girl Scout curriculum to get them. And then fun patches go on the back. So what's a fun patch? Um, so here's an example. Here's a girl wearing uh, fun patches on the back of her vest. They come in all kinds of varieties. So one example could be, you or your troop goes, you're ready to go to the pumpkin patch together this, this fall. So you go to the pumpkin patch, you the leader can order or pick up pumpkin patch fun patches for all the girls to put on the back of their vest to commemorate or their sash to commemorate this event, right? Fun patches are everywhere, right? So all of our shops stock a certain variety of fun patches um, that are available. You can also order fun patches online. You can order fun patches from a catalog in the shop. Um, they will be doing, if they go to any Badgerland events or um, participate in product sales, fun patches will be flowing. So they're all over the place. Um, and you don't have, all girls don't have to look the same. So that includes picking what you pick for the uniform. It's up to the individual girl, whether they want the vest or the sash. They don't, every girl in the troop doesn't have to have the same uniform. And then also with the fun patch thing too, all girls might not look the same. Um, a girl is free if she's maybe on a vacation with her family and she goes, uh, she's at a national park and she goes to, um, into the gift shop and sees a great patch she loves, she can go ahead and get that and put that on the back of her, her vest or, or sash. So that's fun patches, patches. What about those required elements of the uniform? Um, so this handout here is called My Girl Scout Kit. They used to be called starter kits. We're changing it to My Girl Scout Kit. And this is a very useful handout, which you can find under the shop tab of our um, website. Uh, because it shows you what those required elements for each uniform are. So let's look at a brownie one. 
Um, so this shows you, you need the uh, insignia tab, the brownie membership pin, the WAGS pin, the wavy flag patch, the council ID, and the troop numeral set. And then they pick a, set, a vest or a sash. Um, so that's kind of the required elements. How do you get those required elements if you're a brand new troop, right? Generally, the way it works is that for the first uniform, parents pay for the first uniform um, and, and acquire those pieces that the girls need. Um, so um, uh, one way they could do it is by ordering one of these Girl Scout kits. So your job as the leader would be to tell them, and the benefit of ordering a Girl Scout kit is that the shop puts it together for you and that you get a free backpack also to go with it. So that's nice too. But, um, and the biggest benefit being that the shop puts it together for you. Um, so that's one way to do this, right? So generally the parents would be responsible for, for getting that startup stuff. Um, you, the leader, make sure they know where to get it. So where it's available, they can order it online, they can go to the shop, et cetera. And also let them know that financial aid is available. Um, so uh, there is financial aid available through Badgerland. They would go to any parent that's interested would go to gsbadgerland.org and fill out the financial aid form. What's usually happens with financial aid is that it will cover that $35 membership fee um, that all girls need to pay to join GSUSA and then provide basically the, the required elements of a uniform for, um, for girls. That's generally what the financial aid package is. So that's a, re uh, that's a conversation between the parents and council. So your job as the leader is just to make sure they know that they can apply for financial aid um, through Badgerland. Uh, make sure, or, so also if they are having any trouble at all with the form or finding the form, they can simply call our customer care line and they'll walk them through it as well. Um, okay, so um, let me pause here because I hear a lot of typing over here. So I'm wondering if I have a general question. There was a financial aid question you wanted to know if uh, it can pay for membership and uniform items and books or just one or the other. Okay, so someone asked, does, financial, does the financial aid package pay for membership and uniform or just one and the other? Generally, it's both. Um, and they, the financial aid form will ask questions to, to get, they basically use the um, free reduced lunch guidelines for whether they provide financial aid or not. And it's, I don't think they ever make a choice to do one or the other. I think it's always both. For yes, if you're a brand new girl, for brand new girls, if people, if you're not a brand new girl and you've been through um, some years of Girl Scouting, right? The question that they will ask is why isn't the troop covering these expenses? And we're kind of going to get to that. What are your troop? Um, what are your goals to cover with the product sales, right? So, so I guess with a girl, a returning girl, they might we might get into just covering membership or just covering uniform. But with a brand new girl, generally it's always going to be membership and uniform. Okay, anything else? Okay, so another quick thing about uniforms. Um, so a lot of leaders ask, you know, you picture you're giving like a nine-year-old a tiny scrap of fabric. What are the chances that that's going to go from their hand to the uniform and in the right place, right? Probably pretty low. Um, but uh, leaders have handled this in lots of different ways. One way that I always pass on because I liked it was uh, the leaders, because it involves both the leaders and the parents, the co-leaders would make sure the badge patch award, whatever it was, was pinned to the right place on the girls' uniform safety pin, and then it would be up to the parents to get it ironed on permanently, right? So nice division of labor. There is a handout that you either can download or, and I will send you via email as well, called Tips and Tricks. It's a combined handout. It's Tips and Tricks um, from an experienced Girl Scout leader. It's combined with the volunteer toolkit handout. So the tips and tricks has a whole section on badges and patches and various schools of thought on how to uh, get these onto the girls' uniform and all kinds of issues like that. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, and I am going to move on, I think, from uniforms, unless I have uniform questions. Here, I'll just take a look here. OK. Okay, looks like those are all pretty specific questions. Okay. Carrie, am I good, do you think? Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's move on to volunteer toolkits. 
Okay, volunteer toolkit. So as you recall, I was talking about um, volunteer toolkit as that digital assistant that's available to you. Um, on, you can sign in on gsbadgerland.org to see volunteer toolkit. Um, so let me tell you how to get there, right? Um, so we go to gsbadgerland.org, click on that sign in. Um, to, uh, I've circled it here in yellow. So it's going to ask you for your username and your password. Your username is always the email that you have associated with your Girl Scout account, so wherever you receive Girl Scout emails. Password, you may have set it up at some point, may not have. You can always do forgot password. And it's just this week gotten a little bit more complicated, right? Okay, so once you sign in, it's going to give you three choices. Volunteer Toolkit, Member Profile, and GS Learn. GS Learn is brand new, right? Um, and it is actually going to be a learning, an online learning platform that we're going to use where leaders can take training. Um, we're not there yet with GS Learn, and you guys are completing this webinar, which will complete your new leader training requirements. So you you aren't necessarily going to need GS Learn until we have other stuff on there. So don't trouble yourself with GS Learn yet. Um, you're going to pick Volunteer Toolkit, and Member Profile is where we go to renew our memberships, um, sign up for activities, etc. But we're talking about Volunteer Toolkit, so we pick Volunteer Toolkit. If you have any trouble, this is Hillary. She runs our customer care department, and that's their particulars, their number, and their email. If you have any trouble at all accessing Volunteer Toolkit, please call us or email us. Um, usually, it's some small bureaucratic thing. Uh, one box is not checked or something like that. We can easily fix it. And we'd really like you to use Volunteer Toolkit because it's a great free resource for you. OK, so once you've gotten successfully onto Volunteer Toolkit, uh, you're going to log in and go to the Explore tab. And the Explore tab is where you can explore all your year plan possibilities. So I went through all those year plan possibilities briefly for brownies and juniors. Those are those where they, they set it up in a series of uh, meetings to earn a certain number of badges, patches, or do a journey. So explore those year plan possibilities. The best uh, thing is to meet with your co-leader um, or co-leaders and select a year plan. Um, so you may, and someone seemed like they were thinking about, oh, can I put two year plans together or how should I do this, right? Um, don't worry so much about what year plan you pick. Make your best guess as to which year plan has the, has the most of what you need in it. It's easy to either totally change your year plan or to add and subtract things from a year plan as well. So, but you can't do anything with Volunteer Toolkit until you pick a year plan. You can't use any of its functions until you pick a year plan. So don't get hung up on which year plan you're picking because you can easily change your year plan or add and subtract things to it. So once you've selected a year plan, you're going to you're going to uh, explore those volunteer toolkit tabs. Um, so I'm going to talk briefly about them. We've got the My Troop tab, which is a section where you can see all of your girls' contact information. So it's like a troop roster. The Explore tab, again, which is where you're going first to look at year plans. The year plan tab, once you pick a year plan, it'll jump you right to the year plan tab and that'll lay out those seven to 15 meetings, whatever's in the year plan. Um, you'll see each meeting uh, available there. The meeting plan tab is when you click on one of those individual meetings, that'll take you to the individual meeting plan tab where you can see the directions for running that meeting and all the resources that are available for that meeting. And then the resources tab is just a quick, um, is a handy quick links to mostly GSUSA resources. So that's somewhere to look there. And then finances, we have not, um, we have not, uh, enacted, I don't can't think of the word, we have not initiated the finances tab at Badgerland yet, so it's just going to say look back here later. I'm not sure what our schedule is for doing finances on Volunteer Toolkit, but that hasn't happened yet. So I've also provided you, did I talk about that? No. I've also provided you, uh, it's the combined handout leader tips and tricks and volunteer toolkit take home activity. And that's just a guide to, um, with a few little uh, activities on it to, to um, help you explore Volunteer Toolkit and the different functions that are available there. So that's something that you can use to guide your explorations. Um, and again, if I will send all the handouts via email after this presentation is over. Okay, and question. Uh, did I just want the bottom one or the top one too? Okay, so I've got two questions Carrie just handed me. Um, Fundraising options besides product sales. We're about to go into the product sales, so we'll talk about that in just a minute. And then what is the WAGS pin? WAG stands for World Association of Girl Scouts and Girl Guides. I think I got that almost right. 
Um, and as, if you, when you join GSUSA, when you join Girl Scouts, you are automatically a member of WAGS. And what does it look like, the WAGS pin? It's one of those essential items on a uniform. I think it's a little metal pin. I don't want to spend too much time because I don't want to run out of time. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you look up WAGS pin, you will find a picture of it. But it's, uh, it's uh, the pin that commemorates your joining the World Association of Girl Scouts and Girl Guides. Okay, so let's talk about fundraising and product sales. Um, so um, we're not going to do a deep dive. We're going to go kind of on the surface here, but I have a few things to point out. So we have Daisies and Brownies may participate in the two Badgerland fundraisers that we have per year, which is the, the, the fall sale and the cookie sale. Um, once they get past Daisies and Brownies, it does open up a tiny bit to do a fundraiser. Um, so juniors can participate in other fundraisers, but it's still very narrow right, what, what they can do for fundraisers. And the only reason juniors might need to, to participate in a fundraiser other than the product sale would be to earn money to support their bronze award, right? So that would be the reason. What's the best place to look for what is kosher with, with, product, with fundraising? On our website, we have a, did they change it from fundraising to money earning? Okay, if you search the form section for fundraising, you'll come up with the fundraising guideline form that has a really nice kind of simple layout of what's what works, what doesn't work, right? So that's my suggestion if you're interested in fundraising options besides the product sales. Again, daisies and brownies are not eligible for any fundraising besides product sales. Okay, so let's talk about our fall fundraiser. It's a smaller friends and family sale. Girls sell nuts, sweets, magazines, and keepsakes. Um, training is provided, and you're gonna need one volunteer who is the fall product sale coordinator. Um, so are you out of here, Carrie? Okay, so Carrie's leaving me, so I'm gonna get my question section open here. Um, okay. Okay, we're gonna figure it out, okay. Okay, so um, if I'm a little delayed in answering your questions, I'm sorry, but I I'm, we'll get through this. Okay, so um, that you're going to need a volunteer in your troop to be the uh, uh, the fall product sale coordinator. So that's an official role within your troop, and that's it. Could be you, it could be one of the co-leaders, um, or it could be another volunteer. And that person is the one who receives all the information for the fall product sale. So make sure you have someone designated in that role. Okay, so a tip on the fall, learning more about the fall product sale. Um, so it's, uh, it's, an, it's an easier sale than the cookie sale with good profit margins. So I'm really recommending it to you to, to see if you can participate in the fall product sale. Here's where you should start to answer your questions about it. Go to gsbadgerland.org, go to that cookies plus tab, and then work your way through this list that answers questions about the fall fundraiser, including where to sign up for training. So there are training webinars that are coming up on September 8th, which is in a few days, and September 19th, and there's there's links to sign up for them here. Um, so that's the place to start to answer your fall fundraiser questions. I'm going to take a look at my questions section and see if I have any fall fundraiser questions here. Okay. Not seeing anything right now. Okay, good. Okay, but I really encourage you to take a look, at least take a look at that information about the fall fundraiser and see if it's gonna work for your troop. Okay, and then we have our cookie sale. So cookie sale happens in February and March. Why do we have the cookie sale? To teach the five important skills and also to pay for our girls. Why do we fundraise at all in Girl Scouts? To pay for our Girl Scout expenses, right? Um, and I would say uh, Girl Scout expenses are ranked by number one is that yearly membership fee. So the $35 that girls need to, to uh, join Girl Scouts each year. And then after that, I would say uniforms would be a priority and then any curriculum pieces that the girls need. Um, so that would be the order that I would put your Girl Scout expenses in. Um, so, you know, good rule of thumb, you don't want to, parents generally, if you're just starting out, parents generally pay for that first um, uniform, that first set of curriculum, et cetera. But then you're committing as a Girl Scout troop to pay all of your troop expenses through the money you earn as a, in product sales. Things work out differently, you know, on the ground. Troops make different agreements about how they're going to do it. But general rule of thumb, you don't want to find yourself, you know, at Build-A-Bear buying all the girls a Girl Scout bear when you haven't provided 
for those basic needs, right? So sort of common sense. Um, training is provided for all cookie sale volunteers, and you're going to need at least one volunteer to be the troop cookie coordinator, again, an official role in your troop. Um, and it works best if it's not you, the co-leader. You're really scouting for another, you're going to be really involved in the cookie sale, don't worry, but you really would, are looking for another volunteer, another adult volunteer to be that troop cookie coordinator to take some of the pressure off of you as the as the co-leader. And you can also divide that up between uh, two or three adults too. It doesn't have to be just one troop cookie coordinator. Um, and yes, so uh, I'm seeing questions are popping up. So that's all I'm gonna say about the cookie sale right now. And then I'm gonna address these questions. Okay, so Katie asks, so are we supposed to be purchasing brownie kits, vests, sashes, pins, et cetera, with our cookie sale money? Um, yes, um, that is should be a priority of the, if the girls need uniforms, then their cookie sale money, you, uh, uh, cookie sale money should be, um, you, that should be a priority with your cookie sale money. Um, okay, so then, and Membership for GSUSA is only $25. Yes, the GSUSA membership is $25. Then there's a $10, uh, uh, what do we call it, local council fee that supports Badgerland. So the, in total, it's $35 for girls to renew each year. Uh, and then Corey Joe asks, right, did you hear $35 or is that just me? Does that make sense? So the $25 is the GSUSA and then the $10 council fee, so $30. $35 total for girls. It's $25 for adults because they don't have the council fee. Um, and then Corey asks uh, to renew only or even for the first time girls. Yes, it's a $35 every year at renewing or first time. And, and adults is $25. Okay. Um, okay, so I covered the cookie sale. Any cookie sale questions? I know we're just doing a real brief. We're going to we don't have to worry about the cookie sale right now. Okay. Okay. We're almost done here. Okay. So this training was meant to help you feel comfortable, confident, and prepared to lead your Brownie or Junior meetings. I hope we went some distance in doing that. I know it's kind of all crammed into a pretty short period of time. Um, but what's next here is that um, I will uh, harvest all of your emails who attended this training. Um, and make sure that you get credit for attending the training. That'll be in your record, and then you have completed your new leader training requirements. Go to webinar. We'll send you a um, an email 24 hours from now with a short uh, online evaluation just to fill it, quickly fill out about the training. Um, so yeah, that's the next steps. And I just want to thank you for coming and thank you for stepping up to be a Girl Scout leader. It's a wonderful thing you're doing, and the girls will always remember you. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, customer care is generally the first line of defense. So first you go to customer care and they can, if they cannot answer your question, they can um, send you to the right person who can.